Hi, my name is Lexi. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm talking about Jen Stevens' new book, Cleanish. A lot of you probably know about Jen Stevens. She is probably what I would call the fairy godmother of intermittent fasting. She's written two books on fasting, which the first one was Delay Don't Deny. Many of you have probably read this one. It's awesome. This was her first book. It was self-published. Um, I did a video on that one as well. And then uh, what I would call the best book on fasting is this one right here, Feast fast feast repeat and i also have a video on that and i also have those as well as this book i'm talking about today linked down below always so um i just wanted to talk about her new book and it is not a fasting book it is about so it's titled eat mostly clean live mainly clean and unlock your body's natural ability to self clean so there is one chapter on intermittent fasting in here um because it is as we know one of the best ways for our bodies to self clean um but the rest of the book is just mainly focused on cleaning up your life as far as what you're eating and the products you're using and things like that and uh, I think it's really important, and the reason I wanted to talk about it on this channel is because uh, my channel is weight loss focused um, and just basically making your life more healthy. And we do live in a very toxic world, and so, you know, it can be really overwhelming. I know that I have um, gone down some rabbit holes as far as research, and sometimes I just feel like you know, you can do no right um, in this world and there's just everything is out to get you, right? And you can get into that kind of fear. And I think that this book is just really good at sort of pointing out all of the areas to be aware of uh, without being hyper-focused or like paranoid about it. I think that's really her message is that she wants you to um, be aware and make better choices, but not to be obsessive about it. And that's, that's actually what I love about Jen Stevens in general, um, in her approach to fasting and eating and everything, is that she's not super dogmatic like a lot of people are, you know, where they will say like, this is the one way you have to do it. And if you don't do it this way, um, you're gonna get sick and die, <laughs> basically. And you're gonna be just overweight and miserable and and your life is going to fall apart. Um, she does not approach things that way, and I really appreciate that, and it's no different in this book. I would say that for a lot of people who are struggling with weight, a lot of these things that um, sneak into your food or the products that you're using can actually really be contributing to the weight gain or the inability to lose weight. So I think it's really important to sort of look at these different areas and decide whether these things are problematic for you. So even though you may not have considered that anything other than, you know, eating too many carbs or, um, you know, macro focused or, you know, calories or whatever, there may be more specific things that are sort of inhibiting your weight loss journey and just making you feel really bad. So I think that's where this book comes in very helpful for people to sort of look at all these areas and just decide if there's anywhere in there that you kind of could clean up a little bit and be clean-ish. You know, it's all in the title, the ish, because honestly, we cannot live in a bubble and we just have to live in this world and we have to enjoy our lives and not be paranoid. So I think that's really where the, the ish part comes in handy and makes this more realistic. So Jen starts this book talking about her son and when he was little, like two or three years old, he was kicked out of multiple daycares and um, a private school because of his behavior. He was having these meltdowns and tantrums and she didn't know what to do. No one knew what to do or how to help him and it was just out of control. And um, a teacher suggested that she look at, you know, looking at his diet and cutting back on the artificial colors and um, some other preservatives and ingredients, including products and things like that. And so when she changed those things, um, it dramatically changed the behavior of her son. 
and really opened her eyes to this world. And um, I think many of us, especially as parents, have had similar experiences. I know that when my third child was born, he was born just with all of these sensitivities and it was hard to figure out at first. Like he would cry constantly. He would spit up in his sleep. He had green foamy poop. I know that's TMI. It was very, very stressful. Sorry if you hear some kid noise in the background. I live close to a school and they're in recess right now. But um, anyways, so yeah, like when I had this issue with my child and he was a newborn and I was breastfeeding. And so I had to actually cut out a ton of things for my diet and it transformed my baby into a new person. <laughs> he was night and day just so different when I cut things out of my diet. And so that was good to solve the problem, but it was also very challenging because I was eating like basically, I think rice and chicken was like all I could eat. It was, it was hard. It was a hard time. And, um, for a long time, you know, my family had to change our diet to help this child and then another child also had some sensitivities. So, you know, we had to change a lot of the ways that we were eating. And it led me down a rabbit hole to research a lot of the things that are actually in this book. Oops, upside down, this book. So um, yeah, I had already learned a lot of the things that are in here, but I think that they're just, very helpful reminders and especially to be aware the one thing she talks about that um reminded me to just sort of take a second look is that there's this term called green washing and it's where you look at a product and it says it's green it's all natural and it may not be as natural as you want it to, to be or you think it is and so there are apps that you can look and um look at the ingredients and see what kind of potential issues there are with those. And I don't think personally that it's necessary to, um, you know, have every single product that you use be like 100% clean. And I also think that we all have individual reactions to things. I personally react to heavy fragrances. So that has always been something that I've had to be aware of. Like I can't use, you know, the plugins in the house and like the sprays, they just make me sick. So I have to use, you know, some essential oils and things like that. So I've definitely gone down this natural road. I, I am definitely clean-ish, but there are things that I do allow and use on from occasion. But it's just, it is that idea of just lowering your toxic load. She talks a lot about also, you know, you have, everyone has like this bucket and we all have this capacity um, of this toxic load and the drip, drip, drip of what we use and eat, it adds to that load and, you know, wherever your capacity is, once it starts overflowing, that's when you start to have these issues, you know, autoimmune disorders or just unexplained weight gain or, you know, hormones are out of whack and thyroid issues and all of this stuff that, um, you know, and not to say that the the medical world can't help with some of these issues, but I think that from an internal perspective, there's a lot we can do to, um, to overcome these issues and lessen the effects just by choices that we make. So if this is something that you think would help you, that you know you feel like maybe you need to learn a little bit more about what's in products and what are some alternatives that you could start looking at, I think this is a really good place to start. And again, just really good reminders because, um, because there are a lot of potential um, hazards out there that we could be avoiding and that just we could be doing better to feel better. And personally, I know that it can get a little bit obsessive. And there were times, you know, during my journey where I was more obsessive and dogmatic about it and it can cause real issues. And Jen talks about that in her book, just how, you know, the hyper-focused, you know, obsession with being clean can become just this huge problem in itself. And, um, and I think that we wanna avoid that. And we want to be able to not only live in the world and feel like 
and everything isn't out to get us and to attack us. And because I think that honestly, that mental strain can cause its own kind of issue in your health. But also we have a budget, right? Most of us live on a budget. We have limited resources and time that we can devote to changing things up. So I would say like, take it slow and steady and some is better than none at all. Like for instance, you know, like when it comes to the food that we eat in my family, um, as much as I would love to eat everything local and organic and grass fed and pasture raised and all of that, it is very expensive and not always readily av available. And so I just do what we can and what fits into our budget. And, um, you know, so sometimes that means we're eating the best option and sometimes we're eating the lesser option. But I feel like as long as I'm sort of incorporating um, the best things in there and slowly decreasing maybe the uh, not as great things. And I like how Jin describes it. She says there's no good foods or bad foods uh, or like good or dirty foods. There's just food and not food. And a lot of the things that we're trying to eat are actually not food, you know, like all of the preservatives and the additives and funky like chemicals that are in our food, they're not food. So, you know, like just eat food as much as possible and try to avoid the not food items. But if you do have some of them, like don't worry about it. You know, like if the, if you're front loading your diet with um, whole foods and things that serve you the best and then you have a little bit of that other stuff on the side I mean everybody again is going to have different capacity for these types of things but like if you're doing your best and you're prioritizing the best then the rest is just going to sort of it's going to fizzle itself out like because you're supporting your body with the proper nutrients um, it's going to have greater capacity to sort of ward off those, um, the effects of those other things, if that makes sense. So you're basically trying to strengthen your body and your systems and your detox pathways. She talks about that as well. Um, fasting is an amazing way to support our natural um, cleanup detoxing pathways. And so, um, you know, if you're doing all those things, then you don't have to be so over worried about the times that things are not ideal. That's where I feel like this book really shines and comes in handy. And so if you would like to check it out, I have it linked below. I do recommend the hard copy because if you want to take notes, there's a lot of like pages in here where she has spaces where you can write things down of a plan you'd like to do. Um, but if you like audiobooks, I know she does have printable worksheets on her website she talks about in the book that you can go and print out and um, write things down as well if you prefer the audio version. Um, and also, so Jin has three podcasts. Um, I mean, she's like Wonder Woman, but she has the Intermittent Fasting Stories podcast, which is my favorite. Then she has um, the Intermittent Fasting podcast with Melanie Avalon. That's where they talk more about like different topics. And um, then she has uh, the Life Lessons podcast, which is not a fasting podcast with her friend Sherry. And on that podcast, they are doing a series where they're talking about this book. So I will link the episode where they started to um, started that discussion. So you could listen to that if you want, and maybe that'll help you decide again if you would like to, to read the book. So um, that's it for today. And I hope that that you really enjoy this book. If you decide to read it, let me know what you thought if you have read it. And um, I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.